Okay, let's hear from our race winner. Tonight's uh, 54th annual Irwin Tools night race here at Bristol Motor Speedway, and our race winner is Joey Logano, and he drives a number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford for Team Penske. And uh, Joey is joined by Crew Chief Ty Gordon and Walt Zarniak from Team Penske. Congratulations, Joey. Uh, big weekend, as I mentioned earlier, for uh, Ford Motor Company and uh, Ford Racing as they sweep all three week, uh, races here at, at Bristol and uh, dating back to uh, on Thursday morning, uh, winning the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race and then uh, last night, Ryan Blaney went in in the Nationwide car and then today, Joey went in in the Sprint Cup car. And Joey, you get your three wins now. You're right up there yeah. uh, with, uh, you were talking <laughs> about that the other day, weren't you? Uh, yes, we were. Right up there now uh, with uh, four other drivers with three wins, uh, with two to go before we uh, set the chase field. And and uh, certainly, uh, like to hear your thoughts about winning at Bristol. Certainly, this is a, it's got to be a, a, a big one for you. It's a really big one. You know, um, I feel like the Bristol night race is maybe the third or fourth biggest race of the year. Um, just the atmosphere before the race. I mean, if it doesn't pump you up, nothing does. It's just the, uh, you know, baddest mamma jamma racetrack ever built. It's so much fun to go around and you got to hustle the car so hard and it's something we don't typically have. We talked a little bit about it um, the other day when I was in here about how hard you had to drive the car um, and wondering if it was going to be like that in the race. And yes, we had to drive the car that hard in the race to go fast. And uh, it just it means a lot to be able to get this victory. And um, obviously, Penske uh, uh, with the one two finish there, and all three of uh, Team Penske drivers being able to get a win with Brad in a truck and then Ryan last night, and then our, ourselves trying to uh, put the cherry on the top here in a cup race. So it's just uh, all of us got to win. Everyone's happy. So uh, definitely um, uh, a very special weekend for Team Penske to, to be able to do that and for Ford. And um, yeah, we're, I mean, right now the, the momentum we have and the cars that we have, we've been fast at every type of racetrack. And um, you know, I, I wish we were in Atlanta tomorrow. Well, maybe, maybe not tomorrow. I'm going to enjoy tomorrow, but Monday sounds good. <laughs> and Todd, uh, congratulations. Uh, certainly this race team is, uh, is showing that it's championship uh, form. And uh, you guys have uh, really been uh, uh, putting together some excellent runs here of late, but got that win here tonight at Bristol. Huge crowd. Uh, this had to be a big win for uh, for you as a crew chief. Definitely. It's a... Uh it's, it's it's the epitome of short track racing, right? It's a uh, especially the way that the new tire, you know, the ch tire change that we had, and, and what it did to the racetrack and rubbered up so hard. Uh, you had to you, you had to perform on you had to execute at every level. Um, we've had good race cars here through every race. Joey and I have been here together, and uh, we we haven't executed at every level, um, but we, we got an opportunity to do that today, and. Uh, um, just a phenomenal, phenomenal place to race and uh, uh, brings you back to the roots of, of where you came from, where you're going to rub on people a little bit and, uh, you know, you, you run hard. And, and Joey did a phenomenal job of it tonight. And this whole race team's uh, definitely building momentum right now and uh, in the right time, I believe. And, uh, Walt, certainly a big weekend uh, for Team Penske. One, two finish here tonight. Uh, both of your drivers are secured into the chase. You both have three wins. Both are are uh, going to be championship contenders. Uh, just talk about uh, just, uh, the, you know, how the organization uh, feels about all of this at this time. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks, Kerry. I think that uh, it was important. Mike Nelson and I had a little conversation uh, tonight before the start of the race, and I, I said to Michael, who's the general manager of our, of our program, I said, I think it's really important that we continue the momentum that we have. I said it would be great to win one of these last three races before the chase not to back off and just keep the pressure on. And uh, Joey certainly demonstrated that tonight, as did, as did Brad. And I think it illustrated, again, uh, the place where we are right now in preparation for the chase. Excellent. It's going to be quite the chase. But let's take questions now for uh, this race winning team. If you have one, raise your hand. Start right over here to the left. Kenny Bruce, far left. <coughs> Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Joey, when, when you're trying to run Matt down, you look in your mirror and you've got Brad all over your back bumper. How much of a distraction was that for you? It's not a distraction. Um, it's just something you have to put into the equation of when you're catching him. Um, I wanted to make sure I had enough room behind me um, for if I made that pass and didn't succeed and make that pass, 
I had a hole to get back in, and I wasn't going back to third because um, obviously second's a disadvantage on the restart, but third's even worse. So I wanted to make sure I definitely stayed in front of third. Um, so I, I just kind of hounded him for a while and waited for that mistake and waited for that golden opportunity where I knew I can clear him. Um, so I waited and waited, uh, hoping there wasn't a restart because I was going to be in trouble. But um, finally, uh, he got a little bit up in the rubber uh, up high, and he got a little free, and I got a good run at the same time. I was able to get up underneath him and uh, get some good position into the corner and slide up. And uh, yeah, it took it took patience, you know, because uh, if I didn't do it, I was going to go back to third, and that kind of takes your shot at winning away. So um, that's the way we had the race all night. It's just kind of look at how far behind the car is behind you, um, wait for lap traffic, and capitalize it on. Let's go to the press box for questions. Go ahead, Ed and ESPN.com. Uh, Joey Brad just said a while ago that he thought this was the most grueling race of the year. Uh, do you agree with that? And also, yeah. do you think your youth served you a little well uh, for, a, for a physically and mentally demanding race like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I made it, <laughs> but it definitely was a, a very, very tough race. I, I feel like it's the most physically demanding racetrack, um, not only for the driver, but for the race car. You know, you think about the, the loads, these things you're on, there's never really a break. Um, you know, you're just always on the gas or the brake or in the turn. It's just, it, there's always something going on. And um, as a driver, you don't get a break inside the race car either. So um, a few times the caution comes out and you're like, thank God. <laughs> and, then, and then you're going green like a minute and a half later, you're like, what the heck? So, um, you know, it definitely was a, a, a tough race. Um, that's why we all train and, and try to be uh, in the best shape we can and to, um, you know, get through it. But, um, you know, anyone says we're not athletes, I disagree with that, uh, especially today. It's just such a, you got to be able to focus so hard and drive your car so hard up against the wall. And, you know, one mistake keeps, you know, takes you out of this thing. So, um, the focus you got to have and, and, you know, obviously like we were just talking about the, the thought process you have to have when you're trying to pass cars and trying to communicate with your crew chief. There's just a lot of things going on at the very small racetrack when you're making 15 second laps. So, uh, it's definitely a very tough racetrack for sure. That's what it means so much to win here. Go ahead, press box. Let's stay up there. Joey, Chris Knight, CatchFans.com. Do you feel like that you're maybe flying under the radar as far as this championship is concerned? And do you feel like that you could maybe be a surprise attack on, on the veterans going into the championship? And, and do you feel like that they kind of underestimate you going not only into Richmond, but all the way through the chase? I don't care what they think of us. We're going to do what we got to do. Um, they can underestimate us. They can overestimate us. I don't. I don't really care. We're going to go out there and uh, do the best we can. Do what we've been doing. Um, Ty Gordon and myself have been, you know, working very good together and um, communicating a lot with our race car. And, and, and we really understand what we need to race well. And, and that's the way we practice. And, um, and, it, and it shows up when, there, when it comes game time in the race. So uh, we're going to keep doing that. They can think whatever they want to think, <laughs> but uh, I know inside um, this 22 team, this whole 22 team feels like we're contenders to win this championship. And um, you know, I mean, it'd be really weird if we didn't think we were. We got three wins right now. We're um, we got a really good shot. We've been fast at every single racetrack, and um, that's because this whole 22 team and, and all of Team Penske, but in particular, this 22 team's always looking for that next bit. And no one's just doing their job and say, "I did my job, and that's enough." They're always looking for that extra little bit. Um, and how they can become better and how they can put, make our race car better. And that's what it takes. Um, so it's definitely the best shot I've ever had at winning a championship, I could promise you that. Um, so I feel very confident going into it. What would it mean for you to win the championship for Ford? It'd mean a lot. <laughs> that's, that's kind of a dumb question. Of course it's going to mean a lot. It's such a uh, – winning the championship is the biggest thing you can do in this sport. So, um, And doing it for Ford, yeah. Doing it for Team Penske, doing it for, for everybody. You know, uh, It's a lot of pressure when you go into it, but um, we're a team. We do it together. Any other questions upstairs? Back downstairs, questions for Walt, Joey, or Todd? Right here, Matt, and then Bob, and then Stan. Um, 
You know, it, it, it's very hard um, to be able to do it, right? Because, you know, now the top's come in so well. Um, but at the same time, it does produce a pretty good race. Um, you know, it's kind of like the old Bristol, everyone was on the bottom, and you had to kind of root and gouge to get people out of the way. Well, it's the same thing, but up top, you know? So it's definitely, um, you know, it's different, but similar. And I think it puts on a good race. And I think the fact that, you know, some of the lap cars are a, a little bit slower, that that's your opportunity to pass, right? So um, when you can pin a guy and stuff like that, that's when that's your shot. Uh, you know, for us, we had a pretty good car that we were able to you know make passes throughout the day. But um, you know, on restarts, you have a few laps of trying to make the bottom work. Then you have to find a hole uh, to get back up top and just kind of let your car come to you and then you know wait for that opportunity to pass somebody. Um, but we knew that going into it, so it's not very frustrating as a, for a driver. And, and like I said, my car was good, so that probably keeps me from getting too frustrated also. But uh, I feel like it was a good race tonight. I felt like there was some good passing. There was some good strategy um, going on. And, um, yeah, we're running up against a wall. It's very fast up there. But, um, you know, I feel like there's definitely some things you can do. And there's some, a few different lines you can do to, uh, you know, make your car better or um, faster or whatever. Bob, you have a question, then we'll go to Hank, and then to Seth, and then to Jay. Go ahead. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Uh, Joey, when, when you pitted and Matt stayed out, were you concerned that you wouldn't have had, didn't have enough time, or you would just wouldn't be able to pass him? Um, no, I, I wasn't too concerned. I was, um, didn't really think about it. I was just thinking about how I can have the best restart I can and make something happen out of this. Uh, I felt like I was in good position, you know. Um, Todd gave me four tires there, and um, you know, pit crew did a great job on, on keeping our track position. And uh, you know, with a restart sixth, that's better than fifth. And uh, made sure I had a good start there, pass as many cars off the get-go as I can, and then settle in, and then start working on the 20. But I was impressed how, how well the 20 hung in there um, on, on old tires like that. And, you know, seen guys with two tires tonight that um, eventually would fall off towards you know the end of the run quite a bit, and um, I mean, he kind of hung in there pretty well, so he had a pretty fast race car. Go Stan, Hank, Seth, and then Jay. Go ahead, Stan. Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. Joey, have you even had a brief thought about the fact that you now have two attempts to lead everybody into the chase? <laughs> and at the same time, do you believe that your teammate will be your biggest challenge in the chase? Um, well, I haven't, I haven't thought about it yet, but um, as far as getting that, that next win, but uh, I do feel like Atlanta is a good racetrack for us, um, a place we, we were very, very fast. Probably the best race car I ever had was last year in Atlanta, so very, very um, excited about going back over there. So um, that'll be fun. Uh, but, you know, really, um, you know, leading them into the chase is, this means something. You know, it's pretty cool, but uh, if, we, if we were able to do that, but... I'd much rather lead him at Homestead <laughs> and do it that way. But I do feel like uh, Brad is going to be one of the top contenders to, uh, to win this championship along with us and um, the guys that you see tough out there. But you never know. I mean, you've seen it. Um, I know it's a different chase format than normal, but um, you've seen guys that, you know, kind of run so-so, and then all of a sudden the chase starts, and they pick it up a notch, and all of a sudden they're, you know, kicking butt. So uh, you can't really rule anybody out. You know, and, and you never know what's going to happen in, in this. Um, obviously, it's new for everybody on what's going to happen, but uh, obviously, fast race cars and um, being able to capitalize right now is uh, what we need to do when we get the end of the chase. We'll go Hank, Seth, and then Jay. Go ahead. Todd, Joey said in victory lane that he'd never won more than one race in a year, and now he's won three. How much is, the, is that the equipment, and how much have you kind of seen him kind of grow into – being a Sprint Cup driver and just mature and all that stuff? I think uh, everybody at Team Penske does an awesome job preparing good race cars. I think it shows with a 1-2 finish tonight. Um, but you can't do anything with great race cars unless you've got great talent behind the wheel. Um, I, I think as, as our years have gone, uh, as our second year has gone on, uh, Joey, Joey alluded to this earlier, but we understand what we have to have in practice to be successful come race time. And I, I feel like that's something that separated this year from last year. Um, we, we, we know the balance we're looking for. We know what we're looking for. And we're not necessarily the fastest car in practice, but, and, and that was true, that was true here. We, uh, we battled through practice and did a lot of things, but we got to the end of it. And I think, uh, lap average, we were 11th or 12th in first practice. And, and, uh, you know, we looked at what we had, but we had what 
the car was driving the way that we needed to drive to be successful come race time. And I think that showed, uh, I think that showed tonight that um, when we got to lap traffic, we could really hustle through it. Um, so to, to your original question of, of, you know, how much have I seen him grown, grow, I, he came in here fairly confident. He, he owned the position when he came to the 22 Shell Pennzoil car. And uh, that ownership and, and the relationship of him to myself and not only myself, but everybody on this race team is just continue to grow. And I, I think, uh, you know, an often used word that never gets as much, you know, serious uh, consideration is, is we have chemistry. Um, there's nobody here that, there's nobody here that on this race team that doesn't believe that we can be successful and isn't pulling the rope together. And that's, uh, that I think is what, what helps us, uh, you know, to, to have speed every week. And, uh, and I, I think we'll continue to build off that. Let's go to Seth and then to Jay. Go ahead. Seth Livingstone, NASCAR News, News Service. I'll ask Walt this. Compared to preseason, how would you sum up the dynamics in your shop right now with a, a young driver that's already won a championship and a young driver that's, that's come on like crazy this year? Where do you think you guys are at compared to where you expected to be at? I think we're probably, and candidly, uh, we knew we'd have a good team this year because if you recall, coming off the championship, we were going through some significant changes. Think about it. We switched from one manufacturer to Ford. That was a big, big enough change. There was a rules change, so we were starting with a new car. We had a new driver join the team. We had, a, we had a, an incident at Texas early in the season that I think set us back for a while. We got through the season. I think things stabilized by the time the chase rolled around last year. And this past off season, we didn't have those kinds of distractions. We had the opportunity to have everybody focus on how do we make the best cars possible? How does Joey mature as a person and as a driver? And one thing he knows, and I think he can speak to it, when he came on board with us, we told Joey, there's no number one, there's no number two. Everybody's, everybody's equal. We all contribute. We all have the same uh, access to information, the same access to resources. And I think it's really demonstrated that uh, in the performance of the team this year with six wins. And uh, and we think about it, we might have even had one or two more along the way. So uh, I think that's probably a fair assessment. What do you guys think? What do you think, Joey? I agree. Okay. That, that was, that's a good answer. <laughs> Let's go over here to Jay, and then we'll go to uh, Steve, and then Jim. Uh, Jay Pennell with Fox Sports. Uh, kind of following up on that, you know, it's you guys talk about the chemistry you guys have as an organization, not just the 22 team. But when it comes down to it, you're going to have to battle Brad in the, for, for the championship. How do you how do you approach that dynamic of working together as an organization, but also, I mean, you're going to have to beat beat one another. There can't be two champions in this deal. Who's that for? Yeah. Either you or Any, all of us? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think, um, you know, at least from, from the driver's standpoint, um, I think both Brad and myself understand that we need to work together to be able to run well, right? We're, we're a two-car team out there. We need to work very tight together to make it work. Um, and I think that's uh, the same throughout all of Team Penske. You see that all the way through. But um, we have to make sure. Um, as, and as a driver, it's our responsibilities right now to make sure we race each other right, make sure we, we still share our information. Um, because it's the moment we stop doing that and the moment we grow away from each other, the performance will go away. I think we both understand that, um, that if we, we grow apart from each other, we're not going to be running first and second anymore. We're going to be racing for 15th and 16th, and we don't want that. You know? and, and you know, Brad says it all the time, I say it too. I'd much rather finish second to Brad and beat him and finish 14th. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the attitude we got to keep um, throughout this whole thing. And, and yeah, I see ourselves racing for a championship, and I see that, uh, that becoming tough. Um, but I think uh, you know, we're aware of what we need to do to go fast uh, every week, and um, we'll keep that throughout uh, everybody. Let's go over to uh, Steve Richards. Back in the back right. Uh, Joey, this is uh, Steve Richards at PRN down here in the peanut gallery. Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick question. What were you thinking when you crossed the checkered flag to your first win at Bristol, and what does the, having the Bristol trophy mean to you? <clears throat> you know, when you, when you come across the line for, for a win like that, and such a big win here at Bristol, um, probably the biggest win of my career, um, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss of words. I just scream. You know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just 
there's just so much raw emotion that comes out uh, out of nowhere. You know, it's just um, you know the last 40 laps, you're waiting for the caution, you're waiting for something. And Brad's catching me. Um, you're just so intense, and um, man, is to come across that line and get that checkered flag. Uh, I, I don't have words I can put that into that I can put that into. It's just uh, the raw emotion of, of winning one of these races is unreal because you work so hard. You know, you, you dedicate your life to winning a Spring Cup championship and winning races, and um, and that's not just for the driver. That's for everybody. I'm sure Todd must have the same emotions. I would I would think, and um, it, it just like I said, you, you you put everything you got into this, and when you succeed. It's awesome because you're not racing against Joe Blow out there. You're racing against the best race car drivers out there and the best race teams out there. And when you're able to beat them, you should be pretty proud of yourself. Jim Hunter had a question, and then Dustin up here on the front. Jim Hunter, Charlotte Observer. Um, obviously, best season of your career. It's not even close to being done yet. Um, Whatever your worst day was uh, at Gibbs, whatever day that was, did you and could you still envision uh, a, a season like this? And 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 in when you came to Team Penske, uh, what was your confidence like? And how soon after arriving did uh, you uh, might be an important call? FERP. <laughs> <laughs> how soon after Sorry. arriving did that change or or improve? Um, you know. Yeah, my worst days over there. I, I think about it, you know, and, and obviously, um, just like anybody, you'd be down in dumps, right? And, and you lose your confidence as a driver, and that's probably the worst thing that can happen is when you lose your confidence. And yeah, I was I was in that boat, you know. And thank thank goodness I had nationwide races, and we were kicking butt nationwide because um, that's really what I had to rely on is to go up there and win those things, and that would uh, you know help me just get through it. And um, it was times it was really really hard. And yeah, to be to answer your question, no. I would never think that I'd have a year like this at that point, you know, and, and that's why, uh, you know, the mental side of this is just as important um, as the physical side. You've got to have your head in the right spot. And um, But I'm, I'm, I'm happy I went through all that. You know, it's made me who I am now and, um, you know, it's made me aware of how I have to mentally be um, to win these things. And going through the tough times, you, you never appreciate the good times. And, um you know, and obviously there's a lot of good times over there. Don't get me wrong. You know, and, and um, obviously the last year over there, was able to win a race and all that. That was that was good for me. You know, that's probably the big moment that was able to get me this right. You know, and um, you know, and then uh, who would ever think that? I mean, I, I felt like you know when we when I came over here at Team Penske, is I don't know what my goals were. I think it was just kind of like hey, just pick a, pick it up a notch in every single area, whether that's on or off the racetrack, and. Um, you get to walk in there as a new person, you know, be who you want to be, you know, and uh, for me, it was kind of that, that moment I grew up and, you know, took the bull by the horns and, um, you know, was able to uh, get very fortunate to team up with the right people um, to help me uh, grow and um, be sitting here today. So to answer your question, no, I never thought I would be. Um, but as you start building that confidence up slowly, you start to think, yeah, I can, you know, I can win everything. And as a as a driver, you have to have that confidence uh, in yourself to race well. Looks like final question, Dustin. Dustin Long, MRN.com. For Joey, and, and Todd may be able to answer this as well. Um, how did last year, at this point, leading into the chase, what did you learn about preparing for the chase, last year's chase experience, that helps you better prepare for this period, getting ready for the chase, and, and for and for what you've got to go through in the chase? How how did last year's experience, obviously we, we get better with age, we get better with experience, how has it helped you get ready for the chase and then get ready to make that next step up? Obviously you had some, a good bit of success last year, but. Obviously, to win it, you've got to take probably you've got to take another step. So, how have you done it? And, and Todd, maybe what have you seen out of how he's kind of approached things, maybe a little bit differently this this time around? Oh, you go. <laughs> I've been talking a lot. You talk. <laughs> I would say uh, I would say you know that you've got experience at first to understand how to prepare for it, and that that was probably the the thing that I would take from last year. Is at this point last year we weren't locked in. We were we were racing. We had a win, but we were still right at that verge of points and didn't know where we'd be and, and racing people for that 
for those wild card spots with points and whether we be in on points, whether we be in on a win and, and all that. So there's still a lot of stress at this point of just trying to get in. Uh, in, in this race, we, we overcame a lot, came back from uh, having a pit with 40 or 50 to go for a debris on the nose, and, and, and Joey drove his off, and uh, he uh, <laughs> rated G today. Um, uh, but uh, we uh, you know, drove back to fifth, and it was a good, good thing for us. But we had to focus on Atlanta. We had to focus on, Char on Richmond and, and what we could do to make sure we were in it. And, and you couldn't do any preparation. We didn't, weren't as prepared how to go forward because we didn't know what to expect. I think, I think the bigger picture now is you, you've seen it. We know we're in. Um, and, and I mean, we started conversations when we won, when we won Texas of, OK, how do we best prepare for the, the 10 race grind and in the new format? And, and I think the new format brings a whole new uh, picture to, the, to, to what you've got to do and how you, how you need to race each segment to be successful and trying to break that down. And, and then we've got a good plan going forward of, of how Team Penske is going to test for this, this chase. And, and those, are, those, those plans are already laid in stone and going forward, and, and we're just trying to execute them. So um, last year let us know what we needed to do, and, and then the success early in the season kind of let us let the stress level come down and say, OK, what do we got to do going forward? And, and it's, it's really changed how we are going to race uh, you know, the next two races as well. Um, you know, you want to be successful as much as you can, but um, you also want to make sure that you keep your, your head on the big picture. You got to keep momentum with the race team because there's a lot of that right now and uh, momentum going forward. But we still need to make sure we maximize our opportunity at every racetrack in the chase. <laughs> I think just to see it, how much everyone just picks it up a notch, you know, and, uh, you know, we talk about that a lot and I talk about that a lot, but everyone just goes harder, you know, and you, you think, you know, right now I feel like I'm going as hard as I possibly can, <laughs> you know, it's like I got nothing else left in the tank, but when the championship's on the line, there's some more left in there and it's my job to find what's left inside of me when, you know, when it comes two weeks down the road here. Um, when we get to Chicago, you know, it, that's, that's the moment I got to find where is there a little bit left, you know, where can I become a little bit better? Um, and that's my part, but uh, the team needs to do the same thing. Everyone needs to do the same thing to um, be able to race these guys. And, you know, we think we're running all out right now, but there's always something left. There's always something left that you got more in the tank. And, um, you know, we just got to find it and do it. Uh, we were we were fast. We were able to step it up um, a, a little bit, maybe not as much as we would like. Um, you know, we we, went, we battled some adversity throughout the chase, but um, for the most part, we we ran pretty good. Um, I feel a lot better about our chances this year, though, um, already.